Let's stand here. Let's thank the Lord for who He is and what He's already done. We serve, we serve the awesome and the amazing God. We serve the awesome and amazing God. We thank God for who He is and what He's already done. Thank you for coming into this house today. Thank you for being a part of God's service. Brother Mel, you have contact. Thank you for being a part of this service. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're good. Why don't we put our hands together and thank God for another chance. Thank him for another privilege. Thank him for being good. Thank him for being God. He has, he has blessed us one more again. He has, he has given us one more chance. He has given us breath in our body one more time. And for that, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Are you grateful? Are you thankful for who God is and what he has already done? We've come to lift the name of Jesus today. We ask our choir to lead us off in song of worship and song of praise.
We'll be reading from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. Now faith is substance of things hoped to, the evidence of things not seen. For by it elders obtain a good report. So through faith we, un we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which is do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by, by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because of God translated him for before his translation he had his testimony that he pleased God but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him Especially got hard during this pandemic. Oh, yeah. 
but not once did she give up. We honor you in this tribute because of your selflessness and willingness to honor and serve and follow God. Congratulations on the completion of your degree, and may God continue to bless you and your life as you continue to reach souls by lifting Jesus. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians 1 and 6. Amen. Oh, no. Thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you for we realize that you are good. We realize that you are God. We thank you for what you have done, what you will do, and what you're doing right now. Yes, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we come before you today to hear your word, to hear from you, Father God. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. We realize that we are unholy and you're holy. We realize that you've fallen short, but you've never failed us. We realize, Father God, that we've messed up, but you're never wrong. And Lord, we thank you for putting up with us, for giving us another opportunity. Lord, we ask you to bless your word, that your word will fall on good soil, that lives will be changed, Hope will be renewed. Relationships will be mended. That you will receive the glory. All the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Yes, Lord. I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify you. With praise, my heart is still. My heart is still. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God. 
for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to come before him. Let me call your attention to the book of St. Luke, Dr. Luke, Luke chapter 12, verses 32 through 34. In the New Testament, the book is St. Luke. The chapter is 12. The verses are 32, 33, and 34. In the New Testament, the book is written by Dr. Luke, the physician in the apostleship. Chapter 12, verses 32, 33, and 34. Amen. When you found it, you will discover these words. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, but what it what is what for what it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give on. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that do not fail. Where no thief approaches and moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I want to ask the question this morning, where is your heart? Where is your heart? You can always tell where a person's heart is based on how they act and how they react. This heart that I'm talking about this morning is it's not the muscle that you find on favorably the left side of your chest cavity. All right. This heart that I'm talking about this morning is not the muscle that pumps blood to every extremity of the body. Uh -huh. It's good to have that muscle because that muscle determines whether you live or die. It's good to have that muscle, the heart pumping in the right rhythm, with the right beat, with the right sound, with the right indication. It's good to have that muscle working because when that muscle is not working, you're in trouble. 911 get called. Your body gives up on you. You begin to change color when that muscle is not working. Yeah, right. Well, I came by to tell you this morning on my way to the rapture to let you know when your innermost heart is not working, yeah, yeah, yeah. you begin to change color. Yeah, right. <laughs> your heart gives out and gives up on you. And when your innermost heart, that heart that where you think, that heart where you uh, have your values, that heart where you have your interests, when that heart shuts down on you, people around you become miserable. People that are doing things in your presence hate to see you come. It's because your heart is contaminated. Your heart determines whether you speak well or you cuss out loud. Your heart determines what you feel about a person and, and how you deal with that person. I'm telling you today, you need to answer the question, where is your heart? Because man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. God is concerned about your heart. God is concerned about how you handle things. God is concerned about how you adjust to trouble. It's all found in your heart. In the text today, Jesus is speaking. He has a, a rather lengthy speech, and I promise to you today that his sermon will be longer than mine. So stay with me just for a moment, simply because I want to let you know that you need to have a heart that is a blessing from the Lord. 
Your heart, your heart. You see, the reason why people do what they do is because of their hearts. When you have a person that blows up at the at the at the tick of a of a clock, it's their heart problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have a person that rather curse you out than bless you, they have a heart problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have a person who who walks around and he or she encourages people, that means their heart are in the right place. Yeah. Their hearts are in the right place and their hearts are, are what God is looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Jesus talked to his disciples, Brother Whitlock and Brother Miles have been doing an excellent job in Sunday school. And if you were to have read your daily reading, you would know that Luke chapter 12 mm -hmm. was involved in your daily reading for Sunday school. We tried to, and we decided some months ago that when it was possible, we would tie it all together with the Sunday school lesson and the sermon. Mm -hmm. So today is no different. Jesus is speaking, and Jesus just keeps right on speaking. He just keeps right on speaking. He just, he just keeps right on speaking. He just keeps right, he just keeps right on teaching. I tell you, if you were born during that time, you couldn't handle Jesus speaking. A man was sitting in the windowsill one day when Paul was preaching. Yeah, yeah. Paul was preaching from sun up to sundown. Yeah. I'm telling you, they were at church, mm -hmm. Brother Nanlo. And there was a guy sitting and he had good intentions. Yeah. He was sitting in the windowsill, and while he sat in the windowsill, he fell fast asleep. Yes, yes, yes. When I say he fell asleep, he was slobbering asleep. He was dead asleep. He was sleep sleep. He was snowing sleep. He fell out the window and broke his own neck. Sometimes I see folk in church and <laughs> I want to tell them so bad, but I have to be pastoral. I just can't say every little thing I, I, I want to say, but sometimes they'll be about to break their necks. I mean, they, and then when, when the, the preacher says something loud, they act like they've been in tune all the time. Amen. <laughs> you right. <laughs> go ahead, preacher. I want to say go back to sleep. <laughs> but I, I don't want to say go back to sleep because Brother Miles told me, you put him to sleep, you wake him up. So we need to understand that our hearts ought to be in the right place. If a person makes an honest mistake, check out their hearts. If a person does something to offend you, you want to know what's really in their hearts. Therefore, I asked the question this morning, where is your heart? Do you have a heart condition? Do you need a heart transplant? The text declares that where a man's treasure is, there's his heart. Uh-uh, treasure. Uh-uh, cash out. Uh-uh, zeal. Yes, your wallet. Yes, your checkbook. Yes, your debit card. Yes, your credit card. And God forgive you if you got Foley's and J.C. Penney's. And one woman had 25 credit cards maxed out. Well, well, well. I told her, baby, you can't afford to buy a piece of bread. <laughs> because your heart has bought Gucci. Your heart is on new dresses. Your heart is on new shoes. I said to her, don't eat meat today. Don't even think about it. Matter of fact, if you go to the store, don't charge it too. It's because our treasures determine where our hearts are. My question to you this morning, where's your heart? Is, is your heart on godly things or is your heart on earthly things? Brother Big Boy, it says, it says in the text that we need to consider the lilies of the fields. We need to consider the ravens of the air. Verse 32 says it like this. He says, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your own life. Do not worry about your life, for it will in what you shall eat. He says, don't worry about your life and what you should eat. 
nor about your body what you was put on it. Boy, Jesus got some hard sayings this morning. You know we got to get dressed well. We can't go down there and look yeah. any old kind of way, you know. The actress, that, the actress Monique, had a special out, a couple videos out this past week. And she was saying to, to young women, let me look around the room before I really say this. She said, and she was cussing in hers, she said, young girls, stop wearing your do-rags outside. She said, young girls, stop wearing your pajamas outside. Yes, she says, you are better than that. Yes, yes. She says, inside clothes are to be worn inside. Right. 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 She says, stop showing up with your flip-flops on everywhere. Mm. everywhere. She says to us, that you need to be more concerned. And what she was really saying is your heart ought to be on how you dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This morning, Jesus says, don't worry about your life. Yeah, yeah. What you should eat, don't worry about. Mm -hmm. Anybody here ate breakfast this morning just a little bit if it wasn't anything but a berry? Anybody else? Anybody, anybody ate? Anybody ate this? Anybody eat? Come on, y'all. Come on now. You know, you know, you did, did, did anybody worry about what they were going to eat this morning? Did anybody worry if they were going to have anything to eat this morning? If you didn't have flakes, if you, if you didn't have meat, if you didn't have pork, if you didn't have beef, you weren't worried about it. It's just a matter of when you're going to eat. For most of us, it's not a matter of what we're going to eat. We got stuff piled up. We got stuff that we throw away. And then some people have the audacity, Sister Walter, some people have the audacity to say, I can't eat leftovers. Oh, oh, oh. Well, so they just won't eat leftovers. They, they said that's what leftovers are for, to be left alone. Let me just share with you today, we have to get to a point in our lives where we don't let this commercialism of today fool us right. and make us think we have to act a certain way and do a certain thing. Yeah, right. Jesus says, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry. Don't worry about your body. And it's good to be in shape. It's good to take care of stuff. I used to have a six pack before I got this keg. <laughs> but pal, I had them popping all over everywhere. I looked at, at one of my pictures the other day. I said, man, when I first came to Houston, I had I had them popping. Boy, I could I could raise my arm and it just jumped. <laughs> Can't do it anymore. It's gone south. It's not as hard as it, it used to be. Can't do it because we cannot put as much energy in our, in our bodies as we, some of us, been doing. Some of us put more energy into our body than we put into the Lord. People can work out hours upon hours a day to make themselves look good for folk who don't even pay them any attention. They spend hours. Now, I'm not, I'm not bad on it. I'm not down on it. I mean, you ought to do your thing. You ought to live life well. You, I'm the first one to tell you, you ought to eat healthy, get plenty of sleep. You ought to make sure you exercise daily. You ought to make sure you do great things. But that ought not be all you are about. That's right. That's right. Because sooner or later, it's going to wear out. It doesn't matter how much you put into it sooner or later, it's going to wear out. I used to watch a baseball hit in the right field, and I used to run it down and catch it and throw it back in in a split second. Now when they hit a ball in right field, I point to it. <laughs> it's because when we put all of our energy and all of our time into our bodies and not put it into the Lord, we are slowly but surely disintegrating. That's right, that's right. Yes, we are. I used to get up, I mean, I used to pop up out the bed. I mean, I could, I could be at work, I could get up, pop, run in the shower, get out of the shower, run, pop on my uniform, and down the road I go. 
Didn't even have the speed. I just loved the speed. But I would get there and I would sit in the parking lot for 45 minutes. But now it takes me 45 minutes to really get going. I have to wake up in the morning, Sister Powell, and unwind myself. I have to wake up in the morning and stretch this arm that away, this arm that away, that leg young away, that leg young away, and my poor back has to catch up. Our bodies are important, and we ought to make sure we get our exercise in, but don't put it above Jesus Christ. He says, don't even worry about what you're going to put on. Don't worry, don't worry about what you're going to put on. I mean, some folk spend hours upon hours, and don't let somebody be in the house with them. You can't even watch a good TV show talking about what it did look like. You think all the way, and then 30 minutes later, they still trying to look at that same outfit. And I've learned, I, I've learned, I've, I've learned as he said, ooh, that is so beautiful. That looks so good because we can't put too much energy into what we're going to put on when it's compared to godliness. He goes on to say, your life is more than food. The body is more than clothes. Yes, yes. I said to a group of young preachers, I said to them the other day, I said, brother, let me tell you, if your wardrobe is more expensive than your library, you're not much of a preacher. Yeah. That's right. if, your, if your wardrobe is more expensive than your library, you're not doing much studying. Right. If your dress, I mean, and there are some preachers that can dress. I mean, they can dress. Everything's in place. They have every, and dressing is good. Dressing gets attention. But if your dressing gets more attention geared toward you than geared toward God, you got a problem. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. If your flashiness mm -hmm. gets more attention pointed toward you than pointing men toward God, you have a spiritual problem. It says to us that we, we need to understand we are more than food. We are more than clothes. Our body is more than these things. It says to us, consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They, they don't even store up in a storehouse stuff. They don't even have a barn to put their stuff in. God feeds them. How much more valuable are you are than the ravens? Elijah found out that the ravens, Elijah found out that the ravens would bring him food every time he needed food. Yeah, yeah. If the ravens take care of Elijah, then God has to take care of the ravens. How much more is your, your body, your mind, your heart is more important than the ravens? Yeah. The ravens don't even have a storehouse to store up their food. And when I got to verse number 25, I thought about Deacon Alfred and Brother Miles. Look at that verse in verse number 25. And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your stature? Stand up for me, Brother Miles. I see. Stand up here, Brother Alfred. Way out here, Brother Alfred. People are going to say, stand up, Brother Alfred. He's like, I am standing. Well, it doesn't really make much sense for Deacon Alfred to spend a lot of time concerning about looking like and being the height of Brother Miles. Because if you notice, Deacon Alfred standing here, Brother Miles standing there, and Brother Miles still taller than Deacon Alfred. And Deacon Alfred got three feet on him. Deacon Alfred, thank you so much, brother. Deacon Alfred spent absolutely no time Thinking about how tall he is because he cannot add one cubit or one inch to his height. That's right. That's right. So that's why he's an action packed man. When I really, really want to get it done, I call Deacon Alfred. When I really, really want to get it done, when I want the lights turned on, I call Brother Miles. When I want somebody to reach up in the ceiling, just turn the light just a little bit, I call on Brother Miles. But when I really want a workhorse that can pull plywood along with me, 
Don't you remember the fact that small things are good packages? Good things. It has nothing to do with those of us who are six feet or taller. It, the fact that the matter is, God has to add something to us that's not added to others. And if you saw a person that's blind, their earring, their hearing and their ears are better than yours. If you saw a person who could not hear, their sight is better than yours. Because God has a way of compensating for all of our problems. All of our issues. See, we see it as issues. We see it as problems. God sees it as an opportunity for somebody to be blessed by your testimony. The Bible says, John chapter 9, there was a man sitting by, John chapter 5, there was a man sitting by the pool of Bethesda. He was there. He was crippled. <laughs> he was there for 38 years. Jesus come along and heals him for God's glory. Yeah. In John chapter 5, there are a group of people who are, who are there. And while they are there, there's one man. Now, Jesus points out one man. In John chapter 9, the, the religious folks want to know, why was this man born blind? Did he sin or did his parents sin? Jesus says, it is only that God will get the glory. You are who you are. God made you who you are so he can get the glory out of your life. God don't want you concerned about your stature. He doesn't want you concerned because you cannot add one inch to your stature. Right. Let me just park here and tell some women in the house. Folk are getting stuff shot in their lips and shot in their buttocks to look like you. Right. Appreciate what God has given you. And if you thin, enjoy your thinness. Right. If you thick, enjoy your thickness. If you curvy, enjoy your curve. Don't let people make you feel less than who you are because God is trying to get the glory and you're concerned about what you look like. Stay with the Lord. Walk with God. Always glorify him and not yourself. If you then are not able to add just a little inch to yourself, why are you so anxious about it? Why are you so disturbed about it? We need to understand that our hearts are where our treasures are. Yeah, yeah. Our treasures are what our hearts are, where our hearts are. Mm -hmm. He goes on to talk about the fact that the lilies of the fields, mm -hmm. they grow with very little stuff. Yeah, yeah. He talks about the fact not only do the lily of the fields grow, but it is also the fact that the grass are clothed. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Every blade of grass goes unattended to by man, but God attends to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. He goes on to talk about the fact that this grass is rising up in the morning. Mm -hmm. It is rising up in the day, mm -hmm. but tomorrow it is cut down and burned. Yeah, yeah. It is cut down. We should not be troubled by what we wear. Right. We shouldn't be troubled by our clothes. Mm -hmm. Then he asked the question in verse number 28. Why are you one of little faith? Mm -hmm. What Jesus says to us this morning is that when we walk in faith, we don't worry. Right. People are worried about their spouses. They, they are worried about their children. They are worried about children that are not even born yet. We ought to spend our time praying for them. We ought to spend our time walking through the word for them and not worry about them. Turn them over to the Lord. So right, right. Davis knows how to turn me over to the Lord. And it's a dangerous thing to, to wind up in the hands of an angry God. After she gets through talking and talking and talking, and I get through shutting down, she goes to God and says, God, your child is acting a fool. And she tells God, God, your child, Minister Richard, is acting a fool. Lord, I need you to deal with your child because she understands that God can do more with me than I can do with me and she can do with me. 
Brother Gary Van, she, she turned me over to the hand of God. And all I can do then is just throw my hands in the air and wave them like I just don't care. Because when she leaves me in the hand of God, I'm in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God knows how to deal with it. Yeah, right. The text declares, for all these things will be added to you. Don't worry about your drink. Don't worry about your clothes. Don't worry about your family. Don't be anxious for these things. Walk in faith with God. For all these things, the other nations concern themselves with. Yeah, yeah. He says that, that these other nations, the Father knows the things that you needed to be added to you. Mm -hmm. God knows it. You need to talk to God about it. Talk to God about it. I'm not talking to God about your hairstyle. Those are your truth. I'm not talking about talking to God about your hair color. Boy, I know I'm in the wrong business when it comes to money. I'm in the right business when it comes to souls. But when it comes to money, I have never seen a, a beauty shop set, shut down because another one opens up across the street. Sister Hannah, they are there and they've been in those neighborhoods for many years because before people eat, they're going to get their nails done, they're going to get their wig, I mean their hair put in, they're going to get their extensions put on, and they're going to keep buying it every day. Yeah. And then they're going to come to the conclusion, I wore this hairstyle last week. And the beauticians in the beauty shop are laughing all the way home. The text declares, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These things will be added if you need these things. The point was brought out this morning in Sunday school. These things are things that you need. Not things that you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is not against us having things that we want. But the fact of the matter is, there are some things that's more important than what we want. The fact of the matter is, there are some things that are more important than what people see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, God is concerned about your makeup inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is concerned about where your heart is. God is trying to show us the kingdom, and we're trying to show God the earth. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, we need to show God the kingdom as God shows us the kingdom. Yeah. We must get it right in our heart, get it right in our minds, get it right in our soul that the kingdom of God is more important than what we see every day. He says, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is God's responsibility, it is God's desire that we all, all of us, seek God's kingdom. It is God's desire that no man is left behind. Yeah. It is God's desire that no child, no woman be left without salvation. Yeah, yeah. God, want, God wants to show us mm -hmm. the kingdom. The text declares it is God's good pleasure. Mm -hmm. God wants to brag on us. Mm -hmm. yeah. 2 Chronicles 16 and 9 says it like this. He says the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth trying to find somebody who can show themselves mighty on his behalf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What that says is that the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro in your house, out of your house, in this earth, trying to find somebody he can brag on so he can tell the devil, look at them. They are mighty in, in God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's looking for you. Yeah, yeah. Can he depend on you? Yeah. Can he trust you? That he can show himself mighty through you. Yeah. Finally, he says, sell what you got and give alms. He talks to the rich people of the day and he says, sell what you got and give alms. Mm -hmm. Giving alms during this time was that they, they sold what they, they had and they gave to the poor because they understand that the poor would be with them always. Yeah. So what they had to make sure of, that they made sure that the poor was taken care of. Yeah. It, says, it says to us that we need to make sure that we let nobody go unserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
There are too many unserved communities. There are too many communities that are not being helped. We got to make sure that we help people, that we give to people, and we have to make sure that we give to the Lord. God deliver me from those who who won't give to the Lord, won't give to people, won't help anybody out. And what they have done, they have come to the conclusion that I can do this all on my own. Yeah. And because they've come to the conclusion that they can do it all on their own, they've gotten to a point in their lives that they're trying to do it all by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I want to tell you, God wants to help you. Yeah. And God wants to help you through other men and other women. That's why when God blesses you, sister in law you just have to say praise the Lord and keep moving. When God turns somebody around for you and bless them through you, you have to say praise the Lord and keep right on moving. It says whatever you do, the treasures of heaven do not fail. He says put your money into money bags which do not grow old. He says, the treasures in heaven do not fail where no thieves are approaching and where the moth are not eating them up and where the rust does not rust them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what you drive, yeah. it's going to rust out. Yeah. Well, I take that back. They're making cars out of plastic now. It's going to give up. It doesn't matter how you live or where you live. It's all going to rust out and the moth is going to eat it up. So he says to us, lay our treasures in heaven where they will not be destroyed. They will not be eaten up and they will not rust out. That's right. And finally, in verse 37, it says, Luke 12, 37, 34, I'm sorry. Luke 12, 34 says, for where your treasure is, there, your heart should be. Wherever your treasure is, wherever you have your money, wherever you put your finances, wherever you uh, involve yourself, wherever you put your attention on, believe it or not, that's where your treasure is. My question to you today is where's your heart? My question to you today is not only where your heart, it's where is Jesus in your heart? There may be somebody listening to me today who has never trust Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. You can get to know him just as you are. You need to trust Jesus. The door of the church is open. Jesus is the Son of God who died over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. Jesus the Christ took a cross, took a stick, took a limb and marched up Calvary's hill. Me, men, nailed him tight. Mean men raised him up after he had said, I dare you to lift me up. For if you lift me up, I will draw all men unto myself. That same Jesus, they killed him that day. An innocent man died for guilt of men and women like you and me. They killed him. They took him off the cross laid him in a barren tomb. He rose that third day with all power. All power in heaven and earth. He rose with all power in his hand. You can trust him today. Will you accept him today? If you believe the story that Jesus died for your sins, was buried in a barber tomb, and rose from the dead, you can be saved right here, right now. Just trust him. Would you repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life? Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. 
I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who are saved, born again, and know that you are, but for some reason or the other, you struggle with sin like I do. You continue to mess up like I do. You need repentance. You need rededication. You need recommitment. You need a redetermination. I say to you today, I want to pray with you. Lord Jesus, we pray for us. We pray that you bless us. Strengthen us, hold us, and keep us. Give us a renewed spirit. Refresh our minds. Refresh our hearts. Lead us back to you, Lord, that we will discontinue our going astray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who don't have a church home or in between church homes. This is your moment. I believe that the New Beginning Church in Southeast Houston is a good place to worship. Just inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. Whether you're local or whether you're global, you can be a part of the New Beginning Church. Inbox me and let me know you want to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. If you've been born again during this broadcast, inbox me and let me know that, that you've been born again. You received Jesus Christ. I want to celebrate with you and, and magnify the Lord for you. If you have rededicated your life, inbox me and let me know, and I'll be glad to, to celebrate with you also. Let's thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing the true and the living God. We serve the awesome, the amazing, and the true and the living God. The question today is, where is your heart? Where is your heart? It's kind of ironic that the last verse, verse 34 of Luke chapter 12, ends with, where your treasure is, so is your heart. And now we're going to ask you for some treasure. <laughs> It is offering time. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give. It is time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. Raise it, raise it way up in the air. And these young ladies and this young man will serve you. Raise your hand if you need an envelope and you will. You will be served. For those of us who join us through our broadcast, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. You can contribute to our ministry by way of Zale. Our Zale account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Zale account lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail your offering and your tithes in to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Bless him, bless him, bless him.
He's done great things. He's done great things. He's done great things. for these gifts. We ask you to bless us as we come to return them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. I'm going to ask this side to stand if you would. This side. I'm going to ask you to stand. Follow the young lady the young man from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes open and sacrificial gifts. Bless him. 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 Bless his holy name. Yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. And everything, everything, everything. Bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless him. this side to stand if you would. Will you stand on this side? Follow the young ladies from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes offering and sacrifice of us. He has, he has. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, he, he served what is known today as communion. He met with his disciples and he said to them, Take the tray, Brother Miles. Can you give me a pair of love and you can take the tray for me? And you can take you. He met with his disciples for communion. And he says, for as often as you do this, show forth my death and suffering until I come again. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you again for communion. Lord, we pray that you don't allow our sins to stand in our way. Bless us as we ask you for forgiveness. Bless us that we would not drink damnation and eat damnation to our soul. Keep us down. 
as we approach the table. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Those of you at home, you should have by now your crackers and your juice. You should have by now your crackers and your juice and have your heart prepared for communion. Jesus says as often as we do this, we show forth his death and his suffering until we come again. he comes again. We thank, what, thank Jesus for what he has already done through his death and his suffering. to stand and follow the young lady from the rear to the front. And come and partake with us. and to drink together. By now you should have peeled off your little little cracker there and open up your drink or your juice and everyone you served who plan to be served. Father God, we thank you now for the bread, for the table, for the drink. 
But most of all, we thank you for Jesus and what he has already done. We thank you for his death, his burial, his resurrection. We thank you for his body, for his blood. Lord, bless us that we will not drink damnation and eat damnation to our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. When Jesus met with his disciples, he said to them, This is my body. Eat ye all of it. And he said to them, This is my blood for the remission of your sins. Drink ye all of it. The short guy is going to walk around and and take your 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 empties. If you would slide it to the end, the end. If you would pass your empties to the person on the end, that that person won't bite you. I guarantee you. Slide it to the end, the outside ends. Now slide it to the inside ends. by the blood of Jesus and the fact of the matter is it's not how saved you are it's not how smart you are it's not how dedicated you are it was nothing but the blood that saved us it's not what we have done it's what he did over 2,000 years ago he shed his blood on a skull hill called Calvary so our choirs uh, are going to sing, our choir or our praise team is going to sing, it's nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. He's just tuning up. That's not really Jolly Cole. He's just tuning up. Nothing but the blood. Will you sing with us, please?
you're visiting with us, would you stand? If you're visiting with us, will you stand where you are, please? Amen, amen, amen. We have one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Amen. Thank you for visiting with us. Give us your name. Give us your name and, and you may be seated. Give us your name. The big woods are here. Amen. The big woods are here. They scrutinized my paper for me, put red ink on it, that kind of thing. So we want to appreciate it. Appreciate them. Somebody stood in the in the rear, in, in the side, right here. Any more visitors here? Anybody want to be? If you're not a visitor, I'm gonna give you a membership card. You can sign up today. <laughs> you're not a member. Now, okay, there's one. We got we got this membership card. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Oh, this is confession time. Is what you just said? <laughs> Oh, okay. Amen. Thank you. Welcome home. Amen. Anybody else? Now, let me just say to you, there are two young ladies that walked out doing the offering. And so we're going to we're gonna get their offering before they, well, Bigwood, I don't usually do this, but these are, with those two young ladies who, who owe the Lord some money, stand where you are. Stand. The, the two that, that escaped, y'all did, huh? I can't hear you. Okay. All right. And the young lady with you? <laughs> These are our daughters. Our, our daughters, Megan and Macy, who have come today. So we're going to be now. You see why I put them on the spot. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for being a part. Macy, you still got money that you owe. Amen. 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 The Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. All right, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor David. Yes, ma'am. We have a presentation that we would like to make before you dismiss. Who's the presenter? You're a steward. I went to public school. What does that mean? What happened? And while she's getting ready, let me say this. I would like to just thank each and every one of you all that got my text and you are here today and I just want to really, really thank you and I appreciate you because just you being in the place. I know Pastor Davis was really, really excited when he saw you and I know he's trying to figure out, he's always been trying to figure out, okay, what's happening, what's happening? But thank you all so much for coming. We really appreciate you all coming. And some of you all, this is your first time been back in the church since the pandemic for service. So thank you again, members and visitors. Can you push them back down? All right, I'll turn it over to Sister Cora Woods. Sister Woods, do what the pastor says. I'm glad I'm the pastor today. God, uh, I found this little card and it says, as you graduate, 10 things God wants you to remember. He loves you. He will go before you. He will strengthen you. He will guide you. He will provide for you. He will delight in you. He will be with you. He will answer you. He will bless you. And he will give you rest. On the behalf of the New Beginning members, we decided to present you with a little gift. Thank you, thank you. Would you please open it and see what it says? I can't see. Well, I gotta do what folks tell me to do again. Yes, because you are the pastor. says New Beginning Church, New Beginning Baptist Church, Matthew A. Davis, comma, DTL. Hallelujah.
for you and not harm you, plan to give you hope in the future, Jeremiah 29, 11. Congratulations, Dr. Matt Davis. I love you this much. Thank you. to God for him. His journey is, is just marvelous. It's just so great. And we thank God for his heart and for his tenacity and for his endurance and, and staying with the word. So God bless you. We love you. We have to run over to our church first, but 
we kept in our hearts to come and see this great man. So God bless you. We love you. Amen. 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 Craig Gentry and I worked in a chemical plant for almost 30 years. To you, Pastor Davis, all the best for all that you do. We're just breaking all protocols from the CDC. I mean, we just broke every last one of them. I mean, we just broke every last one of them. God bless in the name of Jesus. Have mercy. Have mercy. Thank you, thank you so much. So let me say to you, thank you for, for your support uh, to the New Beginning Church, to all the family members and friends who are present. Let me just say thank you for, for what you do. Thank you for what you have done. And thank you for continuing to pray for me and for us. Um, I was in the middle of pursuing my doctor that Sister Davis was being diagnosed with breast cancer. And in the midst of it all, she said to me, continue to pursue it. So I want to thank her for her element of faith and trust in God. And thank her for, for trusting God in the midst of it. And, and let me tell you something. We've been through the storm and the rain. I said, well, we've been through the storm and the rain. We've been through the storm and the rain. And we went through it together, and I'm grateful to God for this little lady, for what she does and, and how she does things. Like I say, thank you all so much for coming. And uh, some of you all, you know my story. I am just so thankful for being here and thankful that the Lord allowed me to see this day. And I am so proud of Dr. Matthew Alexander Davis. Uh, one of our motto is the Lord has yet to see what one man or the world has yet to see what one man and one woman can do if they totally commit their lives to Christ. And we are committed. We are committed to Christ. So and I just thank God for all that he's allowed us to accomplish because it has not been us. It's just been all God. So thank you so much, Pastor Davis. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much for uh, I'm not often at this point, but I am at a loss of words. <laughs> thank you so much for, for your, invest your investment in me. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your support. And thank you for all that you do. I want to thank Megan and Macy on asking them to stand. All right, all right. Thank them for being such beautiful young women. And we are praying God's greatest blessings upon uh, your lives. And thank you for sharing with us today for coming by and spending time with us in worship today, and we really, really appreciate you. Now, Macy, you did get that money, right? Oh, you, you're in church. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and being a part of our service today. For our audience uh, on the broadcast, thank you for your contributions, your prayers, and thank you for being a part of the New Beginning Church, whether you far or near. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. Let us stand now to be dismissed. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. God has. Thank you.
you for continuing to keep us. We thank you for who you are and for what you do. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that we know our hearts should be turned toward you. Bless us now. Keep us now. Deliver us now. Bless us to walk with you. Bless us to put our focus and our treasure in you. And bless us to trust you as never before. Amen. In the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Here we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much for, for coming today. Those of you who have not served for devotion, those of you who have not served for devotion, see me after service. We need to get you signed up for devotion. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service on today. You are dismissed.